I was roughly in year six. Just a normal day, we had school the next day. So it was around uh, three or four o'clock, a massive um, bang on the door that broke the door down. And I remember so many people running into the house, started screaming, went into the house. My mum didn't have time to, to change. Yeah, it was very scary. My, my younger uh, brother was crying. Uh, my older sister was crying. Uh, my mum was very distressed. They started shouting at him. They pinned him to the wall. And they separated my mum somewhere and then they took us away from him. So we couldn't see what was going on. They, till this day, to be honest, I, I get very scared and I wake up if someone buzzes the house normally. It's, it's not left me that situation. And the way the door was broken and the way people came in, it, it felt very harrowing. I didn't know what was going on. We were completely lost because my father used to do everything. We felt very sad because I'm, I'm used to my dad always being there and doing everything for us. And all of a sudden, it was worse on my, my, my sister and my younger brother. It felt depressing for, for a child of that age to witness all of that and then to see that my mum was very distressed. That's the main thing that got me upset, it's just my mum's face. And she didn't know what to explain to us what was going on. She didn't know um, what, to, what to say to us. It was, it, she just sat there and, and I just see pain in her in her face. When we uh, came back, the whole house was upside down. Every, they had taken out tiles from the bathrooms. They had destroyed literally the whole house. My dad's books, uh, the rooms were upside down. They didn't even bother putting stuff back to how it was. It, was. it was such a state. It was roughly a whole like seven or eight months. We didn't know what's going on and no one's telling us anything. I remember that uh, people that used to come and visit my dad, they stopped coming. They, they alienated us, most of our neighbors at the time when we were living, when we used to go out with my mum to get something from the shop, no one would really bother coming or speaking to us at all. We felt very isolated at the time. I have trust problems as well. I lost trust in friends and, 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 and families because no one stood by us at the time that were supposedly close to us and my mum and everyone, everyone ran off. So um, it has affected me in, in many ways. I've still got anxiety. I have problems, I said, with the, when the bell rings at home, simple things like a delivery or... Uh, someone just postman dropping something. I, I, I shoot up from bed from that day, from the trauma. And I think most of our family is like that. We don't, even the house phone, we get scared to answer the house phone or to, when people come, we just, my mom's become so secluded and I've become so so reserved in that sense. When we tried to get back to school as well, it was, it was very awkward. Everyone knew because my dad used to always come and pick us up. And then now we had to wait for mom and mom had to get us and dad wasn't coming no more. And everyone at school knew my dad as well. He used to help out at the school as well. So uh, they knew something was wrong. And you're embarrassing. And you told the kids, police came and took my dad. It's, it's, it's not a, a great feeling. And people look at you very different. We, there, was no, there was no more um, routine of what we're doing. It was just confusion. We didn't know what was going on. I was constantly thinking, my mom's at home. She, she doesn't know what to do. Everything stopped. The way we used to revise at home when my dad was there and you felt more safe and he'll come back and we'll all eat together and study. He'll let us study and he's just there, the, the family figure. And that all went and my mom started getting very stressed and very paranoid and just the trauma of everything that happened. Not being aware of what's going to happen next or if he's coming back or not or what's happening. It messed up everything and you couldn't concentrate at school. You couldn't do normal things like kids were going to trips Financially, it was very, very hard because that time, uh, mum didn't know what to do to everything my dad was doing for her. So the simple things like going to school trips or paying for a non-uniform day or things like that, we couldn't actually do it. We used to just stay at home. When I was very young, I had no one to talk to. I held a lot of stuff in um, and um, I used to take out in, in other ways, but I was not, uh, I had no one to speak to and no one to direct me at all because all the people that were around us, they, they suddenly disappeared when my dad went. Everyone, everyone in general, they speak about their dad when you're, when you're in school. And my dad does this, my dad's that. My, I have no one to look up to, no one to speak about. I knew nothing. Um, I had no one to, to, to direct me even uh, in that sense. And um, yeah, everyone has their role model. And every, every young man's role model is their father. Unfortunately, I, ha I had no role model. Um, and, and it hits you hard when everyone's talking about their father and and what their father does and their dad took them to this place and that place and it hits you hard and um, you can't really speak. It's just one of those things. It's just, till now, just when people speak about their their fathers, it hurts me because all of my childhood was with my father. As my mother tried her best, a, a, a man still understands you more because of him being a man and you being a, a man, a young man as well. Um, even with issues with bullying, usually dad will sort those things out and later on in life, there's no one. I had to stand for myself and my younger brother. I was forced to grow up. I've got a lot of white hairs from it as well. I'm trying to look after my um, 
my siblings I had to I didn't experience things like uh, what a normal kid would do again I was saying earlier about going to the parks or just having no thoughts going going to bed like a kid the only the only thing you have next day is I'm going to school or um, what am I going to have for lunch I was thinking about my mom I was thinking about my 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 siblings and uh, I hope my father is okay so it, it took my childhood away yes my hardest moments is when you go to secondary school and you do really well and then you have assemblies or you have parents meetings and everyone's father is there and my father's not there and he's not there to no one's really there mom can't leave the house because she's looking after the kids and you end up going to, to to things where your parents should be there to support you and help you and no one's there but yourself my mom is, is it was a foreigner to this country she didn't know much what was going on she didn't know how to deal with it my mother, she got worried to an extent that she she wouldn't let us leave the house or do anything, and she just tried to to, to keep us at home. And um, we were growing up, and you want to have friends and you want to be out, but um, she got so worried and uh, about people outside and how they're going to look at us and speak to us and treat us. She, uh, my mom had a few issues as well because of her hijab and stuff when we were younger. Anyway, so usually my dad used to do everything for her. Um, she just became extremely overprotective, and she used to stress out. So if one of us come late, she used to be standing by the window. She runs outside, starts looking for us. And being alone in a country with no family whatsoever and no husband to support her and, and, and five little kids. I respected her more and I saw her um, like, like a, a very strong woman. But there were some situations where she, simple things like I, I wanted to go out to play with my friends and I wasn't allowed and I used to get upset or my brother's not allowed to do certain things, or my sister. And it's because of we understood it was, obviously, as you get older, you understand the stress and the pressure. But when you're young, you don't understand certain things. Why is she doing this? What's, now, we don't have our father, and now my mother's not letting us do what normal kids have to do. We weren't going out anymore, so it was very stressful for her. She wouldn't leave the house for days, but we, we're kids. We want to go out. And, um, yeah, it, it, it's affected her a lot, and it's, it's put a lot of stress on her. And the stress sometimes used to come out on us sometimes. It's mostly worrying about my, my family and growing up and knowing if people know who my, what my dad is and what, are, what happened to my dad. is It's going to affect me in, in, in work. So what life am I really going to have working or, or studying? I, I don't know what I was going to do with mom because mom's alone most of the time when we're out. And it used to stress me out. My greatest worries were with those mom and, and obviously a future for me and my family. Even for my passport. Um, they took so long to give me my passport. I was on a, on, a, on, a, on a travel document indefinitely for many, many years. They would not give us the reasons why. So it impacted me even getting jobs. Uh, when I used to try and get a job and because um, of the family names, I used to get refused sometimes. And they would never tell you why, but they would not give you the job. They refused to, uh, to give me the passport for, I think it was about six or seven years. Yeah, my mom tried her best, but we were definitely aware and we definitely saw it. It was very, very difficult. Very difficult. Whatever money she had, she would spend it on us, not let us feel anything. But so she tried her best. But we can tell, we can tell from what my dad used to get us to what my mom done, and even the clothes we used to change it off the years and the hand me downs. And uh, she was just trying to get by, mom, on her own. And we could see it. Everyone could see it at home. It's not the same when your father comes home and brings you stuff, and you sit down and you break a star together, and then you do the. So that we pray you follow your father or he takes you out to the masjid or you just sit down and the family bond it wasn't there it was very quiet during uh Fatah, very quiet during suhoor time we just uh, and just it was just sadness in the house about him mostly stayed at home and prayed at home um, and it wasn't the same um you don't get to see all the kids being happy as well or <clears throat> or experiencing playing with other kids uh, what we used to do before um it was literally from home and um, Tarawih prayer, we couldn't go, obviously, because no one would to take us to Tarawih prayer. Um, my mum was very scared to leave the house anyway, regardless. And um, yeah, it, it, it didn't feel like the normal Ramadan we're used to. And it didn't feel like the normal Eid or anything for us. It was just every day was this for us. But it's always been difficult. And it's always a point where if someone does mention it or if it does come up, it automatically just gets you teary and emotional. Just everyone would sit and no one really mentions anything about it because it hurts, if you know what I mean. Just anyone mentioning something like that it hurts. So we try to avoid that at home. It's just, just talk about everything else but that. Mom, and, mom was very strong, so we looked up towards how, how strong she was. And I would tell the 10-year-old yesterday that he, he needs to have patience and he needs to not stress as much to, to reassure my mom. And um, Allah is there and Allah supports everyone. And we grew up 
alhamdulillah with the support of Allah. Financially, so it's, 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 it's affected us a lot over the years. We were never able to, to, to catch up with the, a lot of the costs. Um, a lot of time my mom did have to borrow money and um, we've never really been able to, to pull ourselves completely together from those times and over the years. We had prisons about two, two, two and a half hour drive or about two hours by train. And it was very far for us, even if we wanted to get transport, it was very, very difficult and far for us. Some, some were longer than that. Some prisons we couldn't even reach to them because they were very, very far when they were moving him around. We stayed some months sometimes without visiting him. It was a visit behind um, glass. So we couldn't actually uh, come like near our father or touch him or hug him or anything. Everyone broke down in tears. It was constant tears. Even the, off- the officers, she was sitting with us, she started crying as well. Um, it was a very emotional moment and you couldn't physically touch him and we didn't want to leave. Um, it was more emotional, I think, leaving than, than staying. When they, when they terminate the visit and they take him and he looked very upset. My mum was just completely in tears. She, she, was, she didn't know what was going on. We had to like, help her up and try and walk off. It was very hard saying goodbye. And it was very emotional leaving him because we have to go back to our normal lives and uh, we wanted him to come back with us. It's the worst thing that's happened because we could no longer, even the visits we used to do here, we could no longer visit him because it was it was very far away and it was a different country altogether. The judicial system in that country as well is not great. We we lost hope. We thought everything is lost forever now that he's he's gone abroad. Um, we couldn't communicate properly with him. We couldn't visit him. It was, it was terrible. Simple things like sending money was made very difficult. Simple things like phone calls were were, were not like how it was when he was here. Um, he would call once once every few weeks and it would be such a short phone call and only in English. I thought it was, it's, it's going to be such a, a beautiful moment. It would be a simple release and he'll come home and everything will be fine and it will go back and I'll tell him everything about what's happened in life and um, just have that moment of a father to son that I've been missing for so many years. It was a very difficult release. They put a lot of conditions, which is very hard to live with. It's not what I anticipated, no, and it's, it's just, it's still difficult. It's like he's in a, a prison at home. He's not been able to, to adapt. Most of the prisons, uh, especially the ones that were abroad, solitary confinements or really small cells that they're in, and there's no fresh air from outside. So he's got very, very bad asthma. And also he's got problems with his knees from the cold. He used to say stories of how it was so cold at night sometimes that uh, the bottom of his trousers, he'd tie it so the air doesn't come through and uh, there's no fresh air or anything. They don't know day from night and it's affected him mentally. It's affected him physically, his health. He's not got much to exercise, was was what was one hour a day. And um, most of the time it's just in a very small cell. So um, his health is is, is, is pretty bad. He's, um, he's unable to, to claim any benefits and he's also unable to work both physically and um, as, as conditions from the malls. We heard of hugs through uh, mum's friend. They were there, they just very supportive. We knew they were here just to help both mentally and help us financially as we were really struggling. Well, subhanAllah, it was, it was great. It was a lovely feeling. Simple things like setting up um, Eid events that we missed out on as, as when we were very young, there was now Eid events that we were able to, uh, to, to, to speak to someone at last that would understand and not, and not alienate you and understand your situation and try and help you. Just being, being another human or a fellow Muslim. Definitely, even my mum, she felt very supported. My mum got so much help. The way they used to call the sisters, Barakallahu Fium and the brothers, and check up on the household, and so much support, not just financially. It's actually, they're always there to listen. Selfless, very supportive, and very kind organisation. Shopping, shopping vouchers, help with shopping, um, support with prison visits we which we were, were unable to do without hugs it, it became regular visits because the brothers used to take us simple things like uh, support with, with with books at home and pens and getting ready for schools and uniforms they've helped us with uh, ramadan given us the qurbani the Uthiya. they've helped us with events they've helped me with my uh, driving lessons which i was able to finally drive and help my family um, they help us mentally as well and check up on us and help mum with forms and help us with my sister as well with her studies. They've done so, so much. There's countless things I can mention. With the food vouchers, we're able to go uh, to the supermarket and buy normal shopping without worrying about um, not having enough for the end of the month. Paying the bills helped my mum with a bit of extra cash that if we wanted to get some, some clothes or we wanted something extra like uh, the normal children wanted, we can now get it. That we were, We didn't 
need uh, or fuel less than anybody else. Winter was supposed good because as uh, the, the, the electricity and the gas goes up on, in winter and it was very difficult for us to, to pay for that. Because they've helped us with, with warmer clothing over the winter. They've helped with um, uh, the gas and the electric. They've helped us with heaters, with duvets. And you feel normal human. When we were very young, we missed out on a lot of stuff. And when, when hugs came along, they helped us with, uh, with tutors, whether it was maths or whether it was English or... They helped with, with, with support, even the travel support to the colleges or the schools when we got a bit older, with books. They've supported us so that we can actually get an education and be normal like everyone else. Some of us were very weak on, on, on subjects that hugs helped us. We couldn't afford it otherwise. Even when you get older, you feel like uh, like a kid again because you still get the... You still get the gift. They send little uh, cakes sometimes, which is a lovely gift, and some cards. And you feel that there's still people out there that love you and want to interact with you and feel the whole environment of Eid. It makes Eid such a better um, feeling. And Ramadan as well. The Eid gatherings and the ones in the park. And they used to love it. They couldn't sleep from the night before. And um, then they used to go there. There was so much activities. They, they were playing with kids now, being free, being themselves and not being worried or stressed. And... You, you actually feel the Eid and you enjoy the Eid and the food and the snacks and just everything with it. It just makes my mom feel at ease. Um, a lot of the stress, a lot of the burden is, it was taken off from me when hugs came into our life. Um, if they didn't come in, I would I would have been very, very stressed and um, my anxiety would have been worse. Um, it's relieved so much burden, not only of me, of my sisters, of my mom, of my brother. It's just relieved a lot of burden from me and um, I could live normally uh, when hugs got involved in our life. There's certain things I didn't need to worry about, uh, mainly financially, mainly someone supporting mum in her times of need and no one to, to, to support her with anything and struggling with forms and uh, not knowing English very well. When hugs got involved, alhamdulillah, all of that went slowly down. Even her experience of us became better because she was not constantly stressed as much uh, once hugs were involved in our lives. Everyone needs to support hugs because they help not like other charities or not like other other people they genuinely help in every sense they've helped us from from a to z from tutoring to teaching me how to how to drive helping with the lessons from shopping food vouchers to winter help to to so much help to traveling costs to everything they genuinely help in every single aspect just to make our lives better from kids to adults to live normally like everyone else lives and, and not feel isolated or, or segregated because of what's happened to our family members they bark Allah fikum to everyone that's helped you're always in our dua um, without you this is not possible and your money bark Allah fikum is going to the right place and um, it is supporting our family and other families we know in our situation. It makes us feel normal and human. And just to know that you guys are all support and care, it, oh Allah, it makes it makes us very happy as a family and every family that's that's been supported by hugs. Because of you guys, barakallahu feekum, may Allah reward you a massive reward, inshallah, and Allah keep you steadfast.